Uh, this is a uh, name uh, all the time come across uh, when we talk about PKR, that is partial knee replacement as always a problematic knee replacement. So just we want to discuss about this, why is it so? So it is a one compartment that we always talking about like uni, uni, uni is one compartment, partial knees, unicondylar knee replacement. So if you understand the compartment of the problem, so one is an intellectual compartment that is right patient selection. It is one of the biggest problem, how to select the right patient. And second thing, once we know how to select the right patient, the second part is how to do a surgery very well. And you can understand this is a learning curve we are talking about. No one can do this kind of dance overnight. It takes a toll. And I think we as a nation, needs to evolve here that so many surgeons are experienced but there is a very poor platform when they can interact and they can really learn the uni because uh, it's a steep learning curve some patients ask me why why uh, i'm advised total knee to me because i do lots of unis so i had no answer of his question he is a scientist he is a physicist so i studied uh, literature trying to find out anything on this so there's a wonderful article can we all perform partial knee replacement and this is my own journey i was very happy as a tkr surgeon using navigations and 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 it's a sense of caring for your patients improves and you are determined to learn something which is not an easy uh, easy goal like but then then you just move from your disconnected surgeon to a nice surgeon to a competent surgeon but this is a tough journey but you have to do this and then you can solve the problem india as a country is divided into discrete population we cannot ignore this is our lifestyle our hobbies our rituals and this is a real fact the 70 percent india lives like this and then we have the affluent class the the posh people they do have their hobbies and habits when they need a very high flexion knees and superimposed on young female patients getting arthritic and the obesity is also increasing so we have to see the procedure as a nutshell looking forward for all the patients and population we can cater this so how to select the right patient i'm not going to into a theory there are a lot of things available but this is in a time of a covid i made this presentation so it's a three layer technique every single word is important so number one is this a knee problem we all know how to rule out spine and keep and anything you can investigate on that is the first layer you screen your patient second is it osteoarthritis just to rule out the inflammatory arthritis or the internal derangements of the knee anything acute in the knee is usually is not an arthritis it's it's a long chronic history the patient will give and the third is the most difficult when when the trust takes time to build on this is it is anteromedial osteoarthritis that's where we really need to work upon it so the third layer is the most complicated layer so this x-ray looks scary to me initially i will always opt for a total knee in this patients but if you really go in and see this, this is going to be the precise uh, uh, presentation. This will take some time, but beyond this, there are a lot of patients whom we can go for this. And when we really understand and believe this by doing repeatedly that any anteromedial osteoarthritis is having a good LC ACL and it is easily, we are all talking since flexible virus since the morning. So this is flexible virus is most important. Now, when it comes to the radiology, again, there is a lot of confusion. This is a routine X-ray we advise, standing AP X-ray. If it is bone on bone without tibial translation, your AP job is done. So this is, you are lucky. If you do not have this, so then it left something like this X-ray and you still uh, think that this has to be an arthritis. The another thing is to go for a bone on bone demonstration by a virus stress view. So anyhow, the full thickness cartilage loss and the prepared bed on which you are planning to put an implant is very important. So virus stress view is to demonstrate bone on bone. Sometimes you will have a difficult situation like bone on bone with tibial translation, gross arthritis. Here you need to have a vulgar stress view and you should be clear about why you are doing which excess. This is just a demonstration. This is to see why it works uh, and how it is going to show the picture so this is a spectrum actually see so this all is anteromedial osteoarthritis you can stop up to where you want to stop but this is going to give you a whole spectrum of anteromedial osteoarthritis in your practice and patient may come to a different stage of arthritis lateral x-ray is most important so we all know and this is tricky part because there is inter observer variability is significant and sometimes I agree, you may not agree on this, but this is over a period of time learning curve here. You can go for MR if you want, if at all in initial cases. Uh, I think the biggest difference I would I would do uh, is like 
your team is very important sticky are you can have a different assistant but i prefer uni you must have a consistent assistance and you must have a good setup where you can perform the debates uh, if you see the recent debates are now moving from fixed bearing to mobile bearing it's not a debate anymore i think we all know the difference between the fixed and mobile bearing but the debate is right technique versus right technology this is what we are here and learning together so this is common for all units no matter what you are doing gap balancing or a measure resection technique the basic thing pose to expose do not release any soft tissues minimal soft tissue release is required because it's a bony procedure and always conserve already discussed the vertical cut that is in manual instrumentation that is your first cut or a pilot cut very important you should learn now when we talk about gap balancing everything goes to your fingers and we'll talk about the instrumentation everything goes to the robots so if the gap balancing this is the first time when you cheat yourself then the implant will cheat you at the end this is like a flexion gap measurement just after a tibial cut there are three ways you can put your instrument inside so what you accept at this time is going to be your bearing at the end so here is the first you can say a checklist so this is just a demonstration like this is very simple i always do it in hanging leg position it's my preference so this is a two millimeter it's not a rocket science but this is so simple the two millimeter is so loose anyone can make out uh, just by looking at the thing and the four is not going in what else it can be the most easiest way to balance your without releasing anything you have not released any soft tissues deep mcl is very important in tkr we talk about four ligaments these are the fifth five ligament this is the most important ligament so i am happy now this three millimeter also give you three feelings so 0.3 millimeter is in fingertips if you really want to do a gap balancing this is the right way same thing you have to reproduce in extension but in hanging leg it is a 20 degree flexion that is a extension gap and 20 plus 90 110 is your flexion gap which is why it is in a hanging leg position 2 mm is loose it is just like putting a dual mobility hip with precise vertical horizontal offset impingement and range of motion it has to be stable so this is again 3 mm and you slip in so again the gap check is this is the gap check in manual instrumentation this is little flat than the curved poly so 3 mm the three fillings is 0 0.3 0 0.3 0 0.01 is left i think the robot is going is not able to do a 0 0.01 uh, balancing when it comes to a gap balancing technique second most important thing is internal alignment we talk about alignment in tkr that is a leg alignment this is internal alignment we should understand between the components if the poly is not moving it's suffocating then it's not going to give you everlasting results and then there is our own case see this is the, this is a mishap this is a nightmare you can see on on table but the error we made is we prepared the table preparation before that that's why you can do it at the last check everything and then prepare it so if you are here in the first poly you will have a significant less wear and more and more you go towards the right side you will have a catastrophic wear and that is a surgeon's problem we do a lot of obese patients and so far in last 10 years we have not encountered a problem of subsidence how you have to be very precise this x-ray looks scary to us if you go for proper radiology now it's completely correctable and you can easily do it it's only the soft tissue surgery that has to be done very well Previous HTO done very well. It served its purpose for 10 years, which is a contraindication as per the theory. But the HTO varies in its concepts, in execution. And this is almost a wonderful surgery, which has served the purpose, undercorrected, failed. And again, this is very recently done. We did only two cases in the last 10 years, but these are the proper indication we found that this was the screw which was coming. So we removed it, we grafted it, and, and, and the patient was done with offered with the uni so our almost a 10 years experience 4000 more than that almost reaching 5000 all we had done uh, oxford knee uh, gap balancing technique so very honestly to confess anything when the patient is unhappy we put it in a complication anything anything which is when the patient should go home happily any apart from this we put it as a complication and even though we have a very less complex the only thing is the right technique you have to follow all the time and that's why the learning curve is is to work upon this it's an on table exam you give as a surgeon in gap balancing so right patient selection the wisdom mudra i personally like this so I, this is my my take home message for the gap balancing so optimize exposure we know tbi is very important and never work correct now when we come to the robotics what exactly we want so we want precise data before we plan the surgery moves from 2d to 3d we want something very nice software which helps us in with using artificial intelligence 
we can do calculation like four figures multiplication but calculator helps us human has designed it so ultimately is a software which should help us and robotic precision when it comes to the yes we are just going to finish so three take home message what i understood robotics per, per se is artificial intelligence human intelligence and integrated action this is what we call robotics in sub divided zone so data we personally started with uh, city based so error again if you see on the screen error should be less than 1 mm so data is not correct 3d virtual model plan it take a report sign it you again need a wonderful team all the time without that and now this is the most important part i personally like is what you had planned along with your machine it should give it should deliver it and this is what is pure active robotics where it's exactly in a millimeter precision it is going to give you what exactly is the planning of a surgery and it is completely automated so what you had planned it is going to execute where i personally feel the robot is designed for so it can do everything for you it can take distal cuts it can take chamfer posterior condyle it will prepare the peg holes it will prepare the tibial cuts tibial peg holes everything and then next thing is beautiful bone resections automatically prepared put your trials in check the things and then you are good to go and we all know the alignment is most important between the components that you can always plan on your ct scan so ultimately what i understand robotics is about the precision preservation planning providence and performance so ultimately this is what we want to see at the end by using a technology this is a simple screen you can get so the planning part which took little more time on table it is done with a very intelligent software if you see the component placements zero internal zero varus valgus zero flexion extension only tibial slope you just to need to reproduce it and 8888 is the figure which is the maximum as well as after the trial this is precise and the limb is under corrected so we'll just keep this the take home message pkr pkr partial knee replacement has evolved from just an implant to a philosophy still anteromedial osteoarthritis has identity problem tbi is terrible we know all this and femur is fantastic spend time with tbi whether it's conventional or robotic tbi is most important thing impingement never ignore it let mobile bearing feel your surgical skill too early to offer pkr can be more problematic most of the time surgeons rush early i think the bone is not 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 yet prepared and you need to be very vigilant surgeon when you offer it to a root tear patient so when the bone is prepared i think that's the right way when you go in and do a uni pkr is a gesture of repair and not a replacement and the comparison pkr is a problem it's it's all together different philosophy and all together different surgery soft tissue is a surgeon's issue always since decades it is going to be it is you as a surgeon otherwise you will be replaced so surgeons is going to take care for the soft tissue it's true with robotics also know your system very well thank you <laughs>